Welcome to part 7 of my Tabo Black Widow Mode Studios. In this video, I'm going to begin with installing this 3M486 MP adhesive tape. I will use this in between the heat pad and the glass, which will allow me to get rid of the paper clips that I have on the sides, and it will theoretically allow me to have better temperatures. So, right now, I'm installing the new thermal adhesive. And as you can see, it's a pretty painful progress, but I've done it now. I'll just give you a look at it. And as you can see, I did a terrible job with it, but it doesn't really matter. It should have roughly the same thermal conductivity. And it won't be visible once I receive the print bite plus that I ordered along with my Flex Redrive extruder. So. Once it arrives, you won't be able to see it and it should work. So right now I've also installed some plastic spacers instead of the springs underneath the heat pad and the point of this is to get rid of the wobbliness that comes from the springs. I don't need those springs and I don't use them because they're only there for manual leveling and I use auto leveling using the BL touch so they are completely unnecessary for my 3D printer. And I have now installed the heat pad back in its place and as you can see it still looks horrible but as I explained it before it doesn't matter. So as you can see I have the new, the new plastic spacers that I talked about and they are installed here. I also fixed the wobbliness issue that I had with the heat pad platform. I have now started a test print to see how it works and as you can see it's just an XYZ test cube. The heat pad adhesive looks even worse under when it's bright but again it doesn't matter. Right now I'm waiting for the BL touch to do its thing and then I'll see how it prints. And as you can see, it prints properly. Right now I'm using an infrared thermometer to check the evenness of the heat of the heat pad. Right now I have the heat pad set to 60, but it just heated up so it's obviously lower than that. That's why it's showing around 50. I'm not checking that, I'm checking if the heat is even, and what I consider even is plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius as the heating platform isn't that even either so yeah, as long as it's within that I consider it good enough and it looks that way so there isn't any problems caused by the new adhesive that I used so it's definitely better than the solution that I had before and it's also better that I got rid of those paper clips but te which tend to get stuck on cables and things like that at this point I was going to move on to 3D printing the spool holders and the filament guides for those since the extruder didn't arrive yet but I got shocked from the heat pad and upon further investigation I found out two problems with the house's wiring one of them is one of the plugs had the earth wire live which means it had voltage in it for some reason and I had to figure that out it took a few days to do fix that because I wanted to use that plug for my 3D printer since that plug is wired to a UPS which is something that I need for my 3D printer since there are frequent power outages where I live and the second problem that I found was that for some reason the some sort of residual voltage or something like that from the power supply makes its way to the heat pads and that's the power that shocked me it's about 90 volts and pretty low amperage so it's not significant but you know I can't touch the screws with that so I had to figure that out as well which was just simply grounding the 3D printer seat pads to earth but this ended up taking a lot of my time like most of my week so I couldn't really do much with the spool holders so I'm just going to show you my progress and then move on to the extruders unboxing and overview if it arrives 
effective. But I won't have enough time to actually install it and test it since if it arrives it will probably be on a Thursday on a Friday so that's not enough time for me to work on it so anyway this is the progress that I've made on the spool holders so far as you can see I printed most of the spool holders and I have mounted those but I haven't sanded the handles yet because that takes a lot of time and I need to figure out a more optimal way of doing that so that's waiting I also haven't done any of the filament guides that I'm going to do so this is not much of a progress but I just wanted to show you so that there is a little bit more than just working on the heat pad in this video moving on to the extruder even though the owner of the flex 3 drive claimed that it's going to ship this week it's not shipped yet so I'm not going to be able to work on that unfortunately I have no idea when it will ship and I don't really trust the estimates he gives because they tend to be very inaccurate but we will see if it doesn't ship soon I'm considering cancelling the order and switching to a different extruder like a flexion or I don't know just a titan arrow or something like that but hopefully it will ship soon and I won't have to do that since this is the extruder that I prefer anyways not sorry for not being able to do much in this video if you want to see the progress in the extruder subscribe so you don't miss the next video if you enjoyed it please leave a like and thanks for watching